So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the three main tools you can use to adjust your exposure inside DaVinci Resolve. What I've got set up here is my color space transform. So we've got a S-Log3 footage into DaVinci Wide Gamut and then DaVinci Wide Gamut out Direct 709. So that's the workflow that I use. If I need to do noise reduction, I'll do that straight after the CST in, but in this case, we don't need it. And then I'll start exposure. Exposure is going to be the first thing that you'll change on an image to get it to a starting point or to get it to a place that you're happy with before you start to generate a creative look on that piece of footage. We're going to have scopes here on the right side so you can see visually what's actually happening to the image. So what I've got here is a grayscale. So if I just take the dropper and put it onto the black, you can see the circles down the scopes on the red, green and blue channels. As I move along the grayscale, I'm going up on the scopes. So anything in the highlights on the right side is reflected at the top of this image. So right up to 940. That's where I've got my reference line. So let me just show you that. So I've got a reference line at 940, which is here. And then I've got a reference line at 64, which is down in the shadows. Now, why have I done that? It's because 64 and 940 is where we actually lose the information. Anything that goes above this line, we've lost the data. Anything that goes below this line, we've lost the data. This just allows us to see it visually on the graph. So we've got our grayscale and we've got our visual representation on our scopes at the right side here. So we'll start with our primaries, our color wheels. For now, you can ignore the colors because we're not gonna be working with color. We're just gonna be working with our exposure levels. So this is our lift. So if you keep an eye on the scopes on the right, as we increase the lift, you can see that this part of the scope here is moving the most. And then if I bring it down, it's, going in the opposite direction. So you can see it's almost pivoting around this point, which basically means because it's pivoting from this point, the change on the shadows are gonna be the most extreme. And then the change as we get closer to the highlights is gonna be less and less because we're pivoting around this point. So if we make changes on actual footage, you're gonna notice the shadows changing the most versus the highlights. So this will be giving us the biggest changes there. Now that's the lift. Next we have the gamma. So if I make changes on the gamma, you can see it's bending in the middle of the curve. So this is our mid-tone region, our, mid, our mids, anything like skin tones, grass foliage, like just general stuff in a shot that our eye is gonna be naturally attracted to. That's gonna sit in our mid region. And you can see that it's locked in at the shadows and the highlights. So there'll be the least change on the shadows and the highlight sides and the most change in the middle of the image. And then we go to our gain. So pretty much the opposite of our lift where it's locked in around this point and it's pivoting around this anchor point here, basically meaning that you're gonna see the biggest change in the highlight area and the lowest change in the shadow areas. So it's also reflecting if you look at the grayscale. So that's the gain. And then if I go to offset, this is gonna be a linear change across the whole, the whole image. So affecting our shadows, mids, and highlights the same. So that's the first tool, that's our color wheels. That's our primaries. Next, we've got our log wheels. So you can see we've got shadow, mid-tone highlights and offset. Now let's just compare what happens when I make a change on the shadow. So let me just bring the shadow down. You can see that we're only affecting the shadow areas and we're locking off at about 384. So there's no change on the mid-tone, no change on the highlight. We're locked in and we're just affecting shadows. You can see how this is different to our lift where the lift actually lifts the whole image down and up because we're pivoting around a different point here versus our log, where we're pivoting around this 384 mark. Now let's go to our midtones. You can see now we're just affecting the midtone region. So we're kind of locked in about 300 and then we're locked in about there, about 550, 560, I guess. We're not affecting the highlights or the shadows at all. We're just focused in on that middle region. And then if we go to our highlight, you can see now we've locked off at around 512 and we're just affecting that upper region of the of the footage. And then we go to our offset, and then we can see that our offset is pretty much the same as our offset in our primary color wheels, where we've got a linear change across all areas of the shot, shadow, midtones, and highlights, all getting affected the same amount. So that's what's happening there. So you can see the difference between already between our color wheels and our log wheels. So just knowing the difference when we come to adjusting exposure on a real piece of footage really helps you dial in 
the the right amount of exposure changes that you need knowing how the tools are actually affecting your image so if you can get your head around these different tools then when you come to adjusting your exposure on your real footage you'll know exactly what's happening from a technical perspective and you'll know where to make changes how to make changes and make better decisions when you're color grading let's move over to our hdr wheels now these are the ones i generally use the most when i am making exposure changes and i'll show you why so let's start down here at our black darks and shadows already you can see we've got more specific areas where we can control so if i go to the blacks here and we keep an eye on the scopes on the right side there if i put the blacks down you can see that the change is happening in a very small area in the bottom left of the scopes so we're just affecting the darkest parts of our image. So this means we can get really granular and really detailed control of our black. Now, if we go to dark, you can see we're affecting a bigger region, but we're still just locked in on that lower part of the, of the scopes. So we're really just dialing in our, our darkest part of our image here using this part on the HDR wheel. Then if I go to shadows, you'll see the region gets a little bit bigger, but we're still focused in on the dark parts of our, our image. And then we can switch this up. So if we go to, now if we go to light, let's have a look. So you can see now we're affecting all of the lightest parts of the image, which includes the midtones, but mostly anything above the shadows, which is about here. So you can see how that affects the, the chart. Then if I go to highlight, just the brighter top half of the, of the image is getting affected. And then we'll go to specular. Now just the very brightest parts are getting, getting changed. So you can see already we have so much control with our HDR color wheels. We can really get in to each area and each section of the, of the image and very specifically control how we change the exposure on the shot. So then I'll go to global and you can see now we've got, it's a different effect to the offset where the offset was more of a, a linear move like this. We can see here the global change on the HDR wheel. It's kind of more of a bend. You know, when I drop it down here, if I lower the exposure on the global, you can see that the bottom half is kind of curving. So we're not actually losing detail on the shadows because the line's not actually going below the 64 reference line. Whereas if I compare that to the lift, now if I do this, you can see the lines moving and now everything here is pretty much getting lost because it's dipping below that 64 reference line. And it basically means we're losing, if this was a real image, if anything was in this part, we'd, we'd pretty much have lost the information and it would just be completely black. You can see the lift, it's a bit more aggressive when we are bringing that down or bringing it up versus the HDR global. Now, if we bring the HDR global down, like I said, we're not losing that information. So if we had the real image here, we wouldn't actually be losing data. We'd still have some detail in the shadows. When you're grading, you, unless it's a creative choice and you want to crush your blacks and get them super black and you don't mind losing some information in the darkest parts, that's fine. But for me, when I'm grading, I want to get my image to a good overall starting point. And then, you know, down the line as I start to grade, like maybe if I get to the contrast section of my grade, I'll maybe start pushing those blacks a little bit lower. For the initial first pass of the general exposure, I just wanna get the image into a, a good starting point, you know, somewhere where I can then start getting more creative and applying a look to the image. Also, don't forget to download the free PDF where I've mapped this all out for you. I've put all the tools in there with screenshots and references of what they do exactly. So you can come back to it at any time download the PDF for free. It's in the link in the description and I will see you guys in the next video.